Hey, 49 Niner fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Chat Sports. Today, how about a seven-round 49er-specific mock draft going into the 2021 offseason and getting ready for what will be months away, the 2021 NFL Draft. Now, before we start, let me just say this. We're using a, a website, the Mock Draft Simulator, and so it simulates the picks up until the Niner pick, and then I get to choose, based on who's available, who I want to go ahead and take. As I say every single year, Mock drafts are hard to go ahead and engage because, you know, the odds of us knowing where the Niners are going to stand based on trades and based on who's available when the actual draft comes around is, is hard to go ahead and predict. So what I'm doing today is, of course, taking what I think is the best overall player available who is available, and I'll explain, you know, what players were gone, what players were not, and why I went ahead with that pick. Most important pick is obviously the first overall pick as they go all the way down, you know, less and less important, less name guys. My goal today is not to show you who could be available at number 12 and further on, but maybe some names in the later rounds the draft that you can kind of remember from this video on the night of draft or the day of the second day of the draft the third day of the draft and say oh yeah Thomas talked about him so I want to educate you guys as well as give you some predictions on who they could take in all seven rounds so of course as we said draft April 29 10 overall picks in this one two compensatory picks from Robert Sala and of course the Emmanuel Sanders free agent signing with the New Orleans Saints and then as we go forward the big draft needs we talked about these cornerback defensive end those are my two big draft needs right now mix in you know maybe the center position wide receiver perhaps safety. I mean, they have a lot of places where you could go ahead and plug maybe not starters, but also rotational players in there as well. And we'll go more in depth on that here, getting into the first couple of picks. Okay, let's quickly look at the overall draft picks that they have. We mentioned 10. The big one, we'll talk about it. I mean, first one, 12th overall in the first round, 43 overall in the second round. Thanks to the Robert Sala Rooney rule, getting, uh, of course, hired by the New York Jets, they will get the final pick in the third round, number 102. They have a fourth round draft pick, and then they have three fifth round draft picks. So 153 overall, 170, which comes from New Orleans, and then, of course, the compensatory pick at the end of the fifth round via the Emmanuel Sanders signing in free agency. They have 191 in the sixth, 225 in the seventh, and 235 at the end of the seventh as well as their final, making it 10 overall draft picks for our 49ers. Okay, we're going to jump into you know where the draft had us at number 12 and my pick for number 12. First though, offense or defense? What are you guys thinking here? Offense, do you know, at number 12? Or defense at number 12, type O down below for offense, type D down below for defense. And, and also, make sure you guys are subscribed because we do non-stop draft coverage leading up to the first, second, and third night of the NFL draft. I mean, we do some great stuff here at Chat Sports. So make sure you guys subscribe to the 49ers report down below. Okay, let's go and take a look at the five previous picks leading up to number 12 based on the mock draft simulator that we used. The Lions took Jalen Waddle at number 7. The Panthers were able to grab Justin Fields there at number 8. Broncos, they took Patrick Sertan. I was very upset. And the Cowboys take, took Caleb Farley, and the Giants went ahead and took Kyle Pitts. Now, looking at that, 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 that list of of five players, the top two cornerbacks are gone. And we've, we've talked about these top two cornerbacks. I think, uh, obviously, Sertan is number one. Farley is number two. So you come here to number 12. Where do you go? I went with J.C. Horn, the number three cornerback on the board, and obviously the best cornerback left on the board here at number 12. Now, I don't want J.C. Horn at number 12. If it was me, I'd much rather have Sertan or Caleb Farley. But as draft simulations show, Farley and Sertan could both be gone. And a lot of the wide receivers were gone as well. Devontae Smith was gone. Jamar Chase was gone. Uh, the quarterbacks, a lot of the ones that people wanted earlier on were gone as well. We talked about Justin Fields. Zach Wilson was not available at number 12 either. So I went with the best player available at the biggest position of need. And that is most likely going to be the cornerback position based on what happens in free agency. Maybe Sherman leaves. Maybe he doesn't. Who knows? But they need to go ahead and add another cornerback. And so reluctantly, I took J.C. Horn. Now, again... Doesn't mean J.C. Horn's a bad player. I think he's a good fit, great size, good length as a corner. He looks a lot like Richard Sherman in the overall uh, stature that he has. He plays very well in zone coverage, son of a Pro Bowl wide receiver. I mean, he has a lot of great things going for him. I would just rather have them other cornerbacks like Farley or, of course, Patrick Sertan. But this is not how the draft works. You don't get your pick of the top player. You get your pick of the best player available at number 12, and he was easily the best player uh, available right now. And so we'll go ahead and take J.C. Horn, as we said here, at number 12 overall. The main reason we go corner, and again, you could have taken Greg Rousseau, of course, the pass rusher out of Miami. I'm a big fan of his. He went later on in the first round. 12 was too early for me to go ahead and jump for him. But the main reasons you see in the depth chart is that every cornerback is a free agent. I mean, so is Tart, Harris are free agents as well. Safety's back there in the secondary. They have got to add somebody. They're not going to re-sign everybody. And so as I keep saying, week in and week out here on the channel, they're going to drop to cornerback. And even if Sertan and Farley are gone, I would feel comfortable taking J.C. Horn there at number 12. 
Okay, you guys be the GM. Who do you guys want at number 12? Let me know in the comment section down below. Again, there was no Cal Pitts, like we said. There was no quarterbacks that were available unless you want to trade Lance, which I really didn't want to go ahead and draft trade Lance. I mean, it was it was slim pickings at 12, and that could be a real reality for the 49ers. Maybe you trade back there. Who knows? What do you guys think? You be the GM. Who do you want at number 12? Let me know down below. All right, some notable picks that were gone in the second round by the time the Niners took at one at a number 43. The Dolphins took Alex Leatherwood. Uh, the Falcons took Mac Jones. I would have very much considered Mac Jones there in the second round. The Eagles took Dylan Moses, the linebacker, and the Broncos took Kyle Trask, the quarterback out of Florida. So, again, two quarterbacks. I talked about you may take a quarterback in the second round if you want to keep Jimmy Garoppolo, but build some somebody from the future. All those guys were gone, and so I went ahead and strewed up the center position and took Creed Humphrey, the center, out of Oklahoma. Now, you think about this, it's not the sexiest overall pick. There were some other pass rushers available, but I think you'll see by my other picks later on that I, I covered pass rusher just fine. And this goes to the whole idea of cutting Weston Richburg, maybe not signing Alex Mack in free agency. We talked about that yesterday. Alex Mack, the Falcon, has hinted at wanting to return to play with the San Francisco 49ers, or at least with Kyle Shanahan. So I got the best center available, and that, again, was Creed Humphrey at this spot in the draft. 37 career starts, zero sacks allowed at Oklahoma. He's going to get some, I think, negative draft press because, you know, Big 12, not a lot of good pass pass rushers going against uh, Creed Humphrey at Oklahoma, but still, when you got to figure out the overall issues the 49ers are currently having, at least in the offensive line at center. Creed Humphrey is a guy who very well could go in the first round. If he's there at 43, 44 area, I would go ahead and take him 100%. It just makes it just makes way too much sense. And again, the Niner O-line last year, not terrible, but an upgrade in center, at least a young upgrade you can hopefully have the next 10 years on long your offensive line, to me is a very good overall pick. And so, as we mentioned before, you take the best player available at the biggest position in need. I didn't like any of the pass rushers, and none of the quarterbacks were available, and so I went with the center to shore up the offensive line. All right, into the third round. Again, the Niners have a third-round draft pick just because of Robert Sala. Let's take a look at the five previous picks to end the third round. You see... Um I mean, some interesting ones here. Like Michael Carter, the running back out of UNC, he was gone. Patrick Jones, the edge rusher, I would have considered him. He went to Dallas at 99. James Hunt's an offensive lineman. Aaron Banks, offensive lineman for Tennessee. So those are your final five picks. There was no Elijah Moore or Amari Rogers here, the two wide receivers I was really looking at. They were gone a little bit earlier. And so, again, the way mock drafts work, who's available? Well... I went for uh, 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 Dami Brown. Diami Brown, Dami Brown, you ever say his name? I think it's Diami Brown based on everything that I was watching and reading going into this mock draft. He's the wide receiver out of UNC, and he's he's been pretty good. I think he's going to be a second or third round draft pick, back-to-back 1,000-yard receiving seasons at UNC. He's a great athlete. He's a very good deep ball skills, but he can play both the inside and outside, which is something the 49ers have shown they really want. Most of the receivers can line up not only in the slot, but also on the outside. With no guarantee that you're going to get Kendrick born back. There's no guarantee you're going to resign or you're going to have, let's just say, Trent Taylor. Or, more importantly, you're going to go ahead and get a healthy Jalen Hurd back, we hope, but there's no guarantee. Adding another wide receiver makes a lot of sense. Deami Brown, to me, is... He was the best wide receiver available at the time. And as I continue to say, mock drafts are tough. I mean, you guys can go and try this out, pro, uh, thedraftnetwork.com, and try it out on, on your own. You know, who's available? I went for the best wide receiver I could find. Is wide receiver a massive position of need? No, I don't think so. But I think they want to figure out who's going to be at least the third wide receiver going into this offseason, whether it is Hurd, whether it's Kendrick Bourne or somebody else. I'll go ahead and draft somebody who's cheap. Deontay Brown is the pick. You guys think the 49ers need another wide receiver? Type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for no. Again, if they re-sign Bourne and they feel really good about Jalen Hurd, then probably not. You go probably pat pass rusher here in the third round. But if they don't, then yes, they do, in my opinion, take a wide receiver. And so I took one here in the third round. All right, let's go to the best five available going into the fourth round based on what I saw and who was available. Uh, Janarius Robinson, the FSU defensive end. I liked him a lot. Ronnie Perkins, OU defensive end. Cameron Sample, a Tulane defensive end. And you can see my focus here. He's the best available. And right now, pass rusher, middle of the draft was very, very, um, I think, interesting to me. Sage Sherratt, the wide receiver out of Wake Forest, and Trey Sermon, the Ohio State, former Oklahoma running back, all there. I don't think the Niners need a wide receiver. Again, we just took one. They don't need a running back. And so my focus shifted to defensive end. And here's one that, to me, is a classic mock draft. Not a mistake by the draft simulator, but there's just no way he's going to be there. But if he is, give me Ronnie Perkins, the defensive end out of Oklahoma. There's no way Ronnie Perkins is going to go ahead and be here in the fourth round, even though he has a ton of off-the-field issues. He was suspended to start last season. He filled a drug test in 2019. Uh, he's not expected to go this far, but some people predicted him to go as high as the second or third round. So if he's there, maybe even in the third round, you'd take him. But he kept falling, and that's why I waited to go ahead and grab him here in the fourth round. But Ronnie Perkins is a guy who, again, another Oklahoma player. We've seen 
to be kind of fascinating with the OU players here, but they're the best available when we needed to go ahead and grab a pass rusher. Here's a guy in 32 games, six and a half sacks. And when you look at the 49ers defensive line, it's really good. I mean, people can say, you know, you don't need to go ahead and add another pass rusher, but you know, resign Kerry Hyder. Is he going to walk? I think you need somebody else, rather regardless, you can sign Kerry Hyder or not, because they haven't really shown that Kerry Hyder can do what he did last year consistently. If he keeps doing that, then that's great, but I would add another pass rusher here. And to me, I, I really like Ronnie Perkins. Again, I would take him earlier on, third round. I mean, for sure, you take Ronnie Perkins in the third round. They might, you know, swap the Deami Brown and the Ronnie Perkins sort of draft pick that I have here, but again, he was available in the fourth round, and so as it were, to the mock draft. Who's available? That's who you take. That's who we took there in the fourth round. Okay. Mobile players who uh, were recently picked going into the 139th pick, which, of course, the 49ers had. Chuba Hubbard went to the Falcons. Pretty good pick. Trey Sermon went to the Patriots. Uh, Kerry Vincent Jr., the LSU defensive back, he went to the Vikings at 142. Um, and Jonathan Cooper, he was taken by the Rams uh, a little bit earlier as well. And so we look here at our pick in the beginning, I should say, or as we move forward here to the pick uh, 139 is what I'm looking at right now. Excuse me. Actually, it's going to go ahead and be the first fifth round draft pick. So, okay, we got to get the confusion here because, again, the picks are all weird. The fifth round draft pick, the first of three, I went for Caden Stearns, the Texas safety, because, again, we talk about filling needs and filling holes, and there's a question about will Jaquiski Tart walk in free agency? Could he be re-signed? If he does walk, then go ahead and get a guy who started 28 of 29 games at UT as the starting safety and played, I mean, very good overall. He has some injury, injury concerns. As you get later on in the draft, a lot of the players do have injury concerns, but he can play both man and zone, and that to me be very good for the uh, new D'Amico Ryan-led defense, of course, the first year that he will have and be defensive coordinator. Now, as we mentioned, will the 49ers be picking at these exact spots in the uh, upcoming 2021 NFL draft? They're projected to right now, but they can make a ton of trades even on draft day, and they probably will. How many draft day trades will the 49ers make? Over, under, one and a half. What do you think? Over, or under. They made a bunch of them last year. I mean, was just Trent Williams trade overall. And Marquise Goodwin trade as well. They made a bunch of trades around draft time. How many draft day trades will they make? The over under is one and a half. Give me your over or your under. Let's keep going here. Again, later on draft picks. When you get to the later rounds of the NFL draft, you're looking at potential. You're looking at need in terms of rotational depth. And you're looking at, you know, best players available. I wanted to go ahead and grab another pass rusher because you can never have enough pass rushers. And the best one on the board was Wyatt Hubert out of defense, out of the, sorry, the defensive end, out of K-State. Again, another prospect here. Another good Big 12 pass rusher. First team all Big 12 in 2019. And as we said, you need to go ahead and continue to add depth because you never know if Ronnie Perkins took him earlier, if he turns out to be good, if Kerry Hyder you re-sign them, maybe you don't. Adding depth at defensive end. You saw it in 2020. They needed more depth. They didn't have very good depth on the pass rusher side once Nick Bosa went down. And so we're getting into the later rounds. And going to give me, um, again, Wyatt Hubert, of course, 20 sacks in his 33 or 4 games at K-State. Another good just depth guy who you hope can turn into somebody who's really good, who probably won't turn into somebody who, who's really good. But still, you got to go and make these picks and make the best available. And that's why we went ahead and got Wyatt Hubert. All right, late, late, late. We are getting into the final couple of picks here as we continue to roll through our 10, 10 draft picks overall for the seven-round mock draft. Let's go ahead and jump into the next pick that we have. And I thought about this one because I was looking at, what was I looking at here? Oh, yeah, I was looking at maybe adding like some depth at linebacker. They didn't really need it, though. Maybe adding another wide receiver, but you know, I'm hoping Jalen Hurd actually plays well. And so I went, you know what? LeBron Ray, the defensive tackle out of Alabama, I don't think he's going to be here this late in the actual NFL draft, but this is a great run defender who can, you know, use his big body and clog up the middle and be a guy who comes in, you know, spells Javon Kinlaw or Eric Armstead during some rest snaps and rest periods. And so give me LeBron Ray, the defensive tackle out of Alabama. A lot of big game experience, and I like that about him. You know, I go to the later parts of the draft. Does he have the skill to be a top five or should I say a top four round pick? No. But does he have the skill to play against some of the better players in the National Football League? And the answer is yes, because when you play at Alabama, you're playing against a lot of very good potential NFL starters versus playing elsewhere, you know, in the AC, the AAC, or you're getting some of these non-Power 5, the Group of 5 uh, overall conferences. I take LeBron Ray again. Rotational depth at the defensive tackle position. The stats are not going to, you know, it'll floor you. He only played five games in 2020. 12 tackles, one sack, one TFL. But again, Again, a body to rotate in there to go ahead and spell Javon Kinlaw, who is hopefully going to have a big 2021 season. I like the pick. I like the odds of him being a, a later round draft pick, but maybe even a little bit higher than where he was taken here for the 49ers. Okay. 
Before we keep going, the face mask sale is still going on right now. Chatsports.com forward slash 49 bass. Some of these masks are up to 75% off right now. Big time deals on something that we're all wearing every single day. Mine is just off camera behind you guys right there. So go ahead and pick up whether a solo mask or all the way up to a four pack. Get a variety of different styles, even player themed masks. All of them, majority of them, I should say, are on sale up to 25 or up to 75% off. Chatsports.com forward slash 49 mask. If they're going to have fans in the stands next year, you're probably gonna have to go ahead and wear a mask that's kind of the bet we're having right now and so link is down below in the description box go ahead and pick one up okay let's get into the final three picks the Niners go ahead and have sixth round draft pick and then two seventh round draft picks again this is like we're just you know, closing our eyes and throwing stuff at a dartboard, hoping this player is going to turn out to be good or not. I needed to add another cornerback, though. We took, obviously, J.C. Horn there in the first round. I was looking at other cornerbacks throughout the other couple of rounds we've had over the past couple of minutes here. And so I waited till the sixth, maybe a little bit too long. But Thomas Graham Jr., the starting cornerback out of Oregon, would add some great, I think, just, again, depth to a spot that we have a lot of question marks at, at least at this point, you know, early February in terms of the 49ers defensive roster. He has great ball skills. He has good, I mean, overall length, I think, sitting there about 5'11", potentially even six foot, depending on, you know, when his shoes or not is how it works. He opted out of the season in 2020. That's why he's going to fall further than he actually should be there. So hopefully you get some good, I think, overall um, value here in the sixth round by taking Thomas Graham and adding some more corners here for the 49ers. Because again, as I keep saying, you throw the bio up right now, the 49ers have big time questions. Like, are they going to re-sign Verrett, Kwan Williams, Kelly Witherspoon, and Richard Sherman? Probably not. They signed one, maybe two of them. So they need to add some young players and Thomas Graham in the sixth round makes a lot of sense. All right, again, seventh round, right? Are these going to be actual players that, that play for the 49ers in two years from now? Who really knows? But we'll start by adding some more offensive of line depth here. We'll go ahead and get the tackle out of Iowa, Alaric Johnson, or Larry Jackson, excuse me, who is one of those big Iowa offensive linemen who you hope can turn into one of the great off Iowa offensive linemen because they I mean, they got a lot of good offensive linemen coming out of Iowa overall. He might need to play guard early on in his career just to go ahead and you know figure out the National Football League, and that's good news for the 49ers, but more depth to the offensive line rotation into an offensive line that I think with the draft pick that we had a little bit earlier in the offense of the, the, o, the OU center in the second round, this to me would just add a little bit more depth and more security. And maybe you keep them on the practice squad as they do a lot of times with seven round draft picks just to add some depth, which you need at that position. Okay. Final pick here, our seventh round draft pick, our final of two seventh round draft picks into the 200s here as you get all the way down onto the final day of the NFL draft. I went ahead and added one more corner just because, again, I was looking around. Not a lot of wide receivers that, that really caught my eye. No pass rushers in the seventh round. I mean, seventh round pass rushers are just like, just really not going to happen. Already got a couple offensive linemen. Let's just add one more cornerback. That way you get also, yeah, you, you get Thomas Graham as we did a couple of picks ago. And then you go ahead and get Trey Norman here, the cornerback out of Oklahoma, who again is a lot better than what the draft pick would say here, taking him in the seventh round. He tore his ACL in 2019. And so that hurt his draft stock a lot. He was an up and coming young outside, outside cornerback in the big 12, but he had a good bounce back year in 2020. And he's best suited for the nickel spot, which of course, if you lose K1 Williams and you need to go ahead and assign somebody to play in the nickel. I love the idea of getting another cornerback here who can play on the inside because we mentioned that, of course, Thomas Graham, the Oregon cornerback, more of an outside guy. You go ahead and get Trey Norwood, more of an inside guy. Five picks for the Sooners in 20, uh, 2020, so you get some uh, ball hawking depth in there as well. There you go. 10 rounds, or I should say seven rounds, 10 picks. It's tough. I'm telling you, you guys, you, I'm going to get ripped for some of these picks. You say, oh, you should have taken this guy. Oh, that guy's no good. Google an NFL draft mock draft simulator and try one for yourself. It's tough to go ahead and figure this stuff out, but I think, honestly, did a pretty good job. I, I, J.C. Horn, again, we'll go through the full overall re review here. He's not my top cornerback, but he was the best cornerback available. Creed Humphrey, good center. Deami Brown, you get a wide receiver to go ahead and mix in there for the third or fourth starting wide receiver spot. Ronnie Perkins, who would be a steal in the fourth round. And then a Caden Stearns, a safety out of Texas. And the later round guys, who you just kind of hope eventually turn out to be decent players. White Hubert, Le, uh, late LeBrian Ray, excuse me. Thomas Graham Jr., Alaric Jansen, Jackson, and Trey Norwood to go ahead and round up the 10 total overall picks. A longer video today, again, diving into, hopefully you guys enjoy the mock draft here as we did this. We'll do plenty more of these mock drafts in the later future, maybe include some trades as well, because the odds of the Niners not making any trades is very, very slim, but that's how mock drafts work. Grade my mock down below, A, B, C, D, or F. I want to see what you guys think overall with this mock draft. I, I give a solid B. I wish the 12th overall draft pick could be... 
you know, a little better. I mean, I hope that someone falls to number 12, but it didn't happen. And so, again, yeah, J.C. Horn is where we went ahead and took. Again, go ahead and give me the mock draft grades A through F down below in the comment section. And make sure you guys are subscribed because we're going to do a lot more videos like this in the coming days and weeks. That's all we have for today here in the 49ers Report. I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off for the rest of your day.